Are you looking to learn more about investing in the central Indiana real estate market? You've come to the right place. Welcome to the Indie Real Estate Investing Podcast with TNH Realty, where we discuss all things related to investing in the central Indiana real estate market. Thank you for listening and enjoy the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Indie Real Estate Investing Podcast. I'm your host, Jeremy Tallman with TNH Realty. We are a residential property management company that services the central Indiana market. So in our very last episode of 2022, we thought it made sense to pause for a minute, reflect on 2022, and then give listeners some thoughts, our thoughts on what's going to happen in 2023. So it's kind of a recap and then a preview episode, if you will. And to help facilitate that, I have both Devin Hicks from our brokerage department and Jake Knight, our business development manager on here with me. Welcome to the show, you two. Thank you. Thank you. So Devin, this is actually your second time on the podcast. We've only had like six or seven or eight, something like that. And you did our first one with me. Um, So just a quick recap, tell everyone real quickly, again, what you do for us. Yeah. So I've been with TNH for a little over five years now, and I um, head up our our brokerage department. So I help investor clients purchase properties. And then we also help our our investor clients sell their properties when they are ready to do so. All right. Jake, this is your very first time on the show. You're our business development manager, meaning if you've done business with us, our client, a lot of our clients listen to this, but if you've done business with us, you know Jake. Um, he's going to be your first phone call into our into our system typically. So tell everyone how long you've been here, what you do on a day-to-day basis, Jake. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, I've been here since 2016. And yeah, my, my title is Business Development Manager, uh, which uh, generally means I'm responsible for growing TNH, uh, acquisitions, relationships, uh, stuff like that. So, um, you know, I spend, you know, part of my day you know, just advising on, you know, good places to purchase real estate here, uh, rent rates, uh, good places to invest and, uh, a lot more. Yeah. So you two are in the, on the field a ton and you know, our market as well as I think anyone in the city in terms of the rental, the rental market and the overall real estate market. So I think it's pretty safe to say that you're, you're highly qualified to get into what we want to get into today. And I, kind of want to divide this podcast into four different sections. I want to talk interest rates because everybody is talking interest rates. I want to talk about home prices because a lot of people are talking about home prices. Then I want to transition to rental rates, what we're going to what we're what we've been seeing this year in central Indiana and then what we anticipate in 2023. Then I want to end it on what you two consider to be the best places to invest here in central Indiana. It's probably one of the more common questions we get. So I want to spend some time doing that. So let's get into it. Let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about interest rates and Devin, you're the, um, the resident expert here. You, you talk to investors every day about rates. You talk to a lot of lenders about rates. You see what the people are paying for real estate now in terms of, 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 um, the cost of money. So in January of this year, so January, 2022, if I bought a property and used a mortgage, what would my interest rate be back then? Yeah. So I looked back uh, at a few transactions we did. And at that time, most of my investor clients were getting between four to 5%. Four to 5%. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that would be 30 year or 20 year. I mean, there's probably going to be some variables, which is why you gave this spread. It just depends on the type of loan and things like that. Yeah. Most commonly 30 year conventional. So. Right. Okay. Were, were they paying points at all at that point? Mm, Maybe here and there, but it was not definitely not, you know, not much if, if at all. Right. So really cheap money at the end of the day, because it was, it was cheap eating into a mortgage. The mortgage itself was cheap. And so, um, life was good. I mean, that was, that's a good rate. So today, 11 months later, what would, what would the interest rate that I would pay today if I bought, bought a house with using a mortgage? Yeah. So today, um, 
I would say most of my clients are in the seven to 8% range. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I'd say mid sevens is kind of what I'm seeing the most and that's, but that's with paying, paying down a little bit. So if you're not paying down anything, you're probably going to be eight, maybe a little bit more. Okay. So if you pay, what is it? A thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars to discount. Mm -hmm. Um, is that that range one to 3000? Maybe am I wrong about that? Or Yeah, it, it's, I've seen it be a little bit higher to be honest oh. recently. Um, uh, I've seen, you know, as much as, you know, like 2,500, 3000 for, um, one. So, okay. It, it's, it's been a little bit higher, but. Okay. So basically maybe not doubled since January, but real close in some cases, probably doubled. Mm -hmm. Um, cause if you were paying four back then, now you're paying eight, then you, you obviously, have doubled. So where do you, where do you see interest rates trending heading in 2023? Yeah. Like, well, as everyone is caveating, um, really not sure. I, I don't think anyone's really sure, but I feel just from lenders that I've, I've talked with and that I work with, um, and, you know, just some things I've read, I personally feel, I think we're definitely going to see a bump going into the new year. I think we'll see them go up a little bit more um, in early 2023, but I, I hope, and I think they might, they might kind of start coming back down maybe late 2023 and maybe kind of level off in 2024, hopefully. Um, right. It might just be my own wishful thinking, but. Yeah. So it's hard to predict exactly what the Fed's going to do, but. I guess it might make sense at this point to kind of give everyone a, a sense of what has happened with interest rates throughout 2022. So the Fed, the first four times uh, the Fed met this year, they raised interest rates by 75 basis points in every one of those first four meetings. And that's a big increase. That's 300 basis points in those four meetings that interest rates went up. Um so today is December 15th and yesterday they met again and decided to raise interest rates a half point or 50 basis points. So there are, they are slowing down a little bit on that. Um, but the end result is that we now have the highest interest rates that we've experienced since 2007. So that can be scary for investors who, you know, Devin, like you said, are paying four or 5% interest rates beginning of this year, all of a sudden they're, you know, paying twice that much. Um, and that, that, that can be scary. And the other issue here is they are signaling that there could be more increases to come, but they are curbing, uh, <laughs> at least for now, the amount of those increases. But um, like you mentioned, I think we're probably set to, to see some more increases as we enter 2023, but hopefully you know, they continue to curb and hopefully we all hope that it eventually they stop increase rates and increasing rates and, you know, maybe even decrease. So, okay. Well, that's, that's a good thing to know. And a good thing, I guess, to keep in mind as an investor, interest rates are, you know, play a big part in, in cash flow and monthly payment and things like that. And I want to get into that a little more. So let's talk about home prices. So Devin, if I wanted to buy a three bedroom, two bath property in January of this year. Let's just pick a place in Indianapolis. I'll let you do that. But what would I pay for that three bedroom, two bath property in January? Sure. Yeah. Uh, let's just say a basic little three, two ranch in Franklin township. Uh, there's a neighborhood that we manage a few in, you know, I'd say in January, you're probably paying two around 200,000 for that. Okay. And then today, if I wanted to buy that same ranch, again, let's just compare apples to apples, um, that exact same ranch, same address, what would I pay? I'd say you'd probably be around 185, 180, 185. Okay. So 15,000 different. Mm -hmm. That's quick math here, seven and eight percent drop in price, probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me. How would that, based on that price and then based on the interest rate, so I, so I, so I pay less today for the, to buy it, but I'm also paying more for my mortgage. Mm -hmm. So can you give me an idea of 
what is, how does that affect my mortgage payment? Even though I'm paying less, yeah. interest rates higher, give me a dollar amount of difference in payment. Yeah. So I did a little quick math here. Uh, so I just picked the same $200,000 house in January at a 4.2% uh, interest rate, your mortgage payment, not including taxes, insurance, all sure. that, just the flat mortgage payment would be $957. So then if we're paying $185,000 for that same house today at, I just said 7.2%, that's uh, a bump up to $1,256. Wow. So right at $300 increase. Yeah. No, so that makes a big difference. I mean, people would love $300 cash flow. So you, you know, you, you've eliminated all that just in, in just to your mortgage payment, um, even though you're paying less for the property. So you gain equity, you, you know, essentially you, you would think if you're a long-term investor, which that's who we love to, to work with, um, that you've gained equity which is good, but, um, you know, the, the downside is on a monthly basis, that cash flow is going to get, going to get squeezed a little bit. So again, like with interest rates, Devin, give me your thoughts on where you see homes trending locally. I know we can discuss some MIBOR, um, statistics. MIBOR is our local governing realtor association. It stands for the Metropolitan Indianapolis Board of Realtors. They produce monthly statistics every every month and, and send them out to us with month over month comparison and also year over year comparison. So tell me where, where do you see home values trending locally here in 2023? Yeah. Again, I think it's really going to depend on what interest rates do, but I think from a very top level, I think we're going to continue to see incremental drops in price going into 2023. I think sellers are going to, you know, continue to adjust to the new market and we're going to kind of see prices continue to come down. I know the central Indiana average, um, I saw the, the, uh, the average, um, it was 97% of list price is, um, is what, you know, we're seeing right now, as opposed to back in, I think March, it was like 101, 102%. Mm -hmm. So not drastic, you know, but definitely coming down, um, in that regard. I know, on deals that we're doing personally for our clients, we're averaging about 92 to 95% of list price. I did some quick averages for what, what we're doing. For uh, buyers. For buyers, correct. Right. Um, that's good. You're working them down below average. Um, yeah. <laughs> try, so, try. Yeah. Okay. So if we get into the numbers just for a minute here, um, I'll just go over these quickly and we can talk about it. But in November... So my boards released their November statistics. I think it came out yesterday or day before. Um, year over year, we saw a price increase in central Indiana, which is the my board coverage area of 10.2%. So if you look at it year over year, we're still doing fine. Like that's, that's a really big number for central Indiana, 10.2%. But I would look at it more granular or more, I guess, micro. If you look at month over month, <clears throat> We are down 1.1%. But again, if you look over, if you look at month over month, we're down 1.1%. So the average median sale price um, just a few months ago, Devin, was 300,000. And in November, it was down to 280, right? So it has dropped some, I mean, from just month over month over month. The graphic that's right below this, I know that our viewers can't, our listeners can't see this, but you know, it shows the, the, the trend upward in price. And now we're starting to see a little, you know, a little dip. Um, so we'll see how that continues throughout the year. The other thing, Devin, you want to get into some of this other stuff real quick about the decreased in closed sales and new listings and things like that. Yeah. So closed sales decreased uh, 28% almost 29%, new listings decreased almost 25%. Um, and I think I saw that we only have about 1.7 months worth of inventory. Um, and I think the MIBOR, I think MIBOR said that's half the national average. So. Hmm. Okay. Pretty so, drastic. Yeah. Yeah. No, no question. Okay. So I guess in summary, interest rates probably going to trend up a little bit. Um, home values may continue to trend down a little bit. Um, but I think we're at the point where I don't think there's going to be any major changes either in either um, 
part of those. At least we hope not. So, all right, Jake, let's transition to you here. Let's talk rent rates. I know you talk rent rates all day long. You know, Indianapolis has historically been a very stable market, both from the sales standpoint and also from rent rates. We, you know, typically go up each year, but it's usually 2% to 5%, you know, depending on the year. I guess, give me your thoughts on kind of where we started 2022 and where you think we're headed. Yeah. Well, it's, it's really anybody's guess, right? Yeah. So, but um, yeah, I, I, I think it's, it's good to probably expect it to continue to increase a little bit. You know, it's a very stable market, you know, so what we've seen over the past several years uh, is basically slow and steady growth on rents. You know, it's, it's not jumping large quantities, you know, between, you know, six or six months or a year, uh, things kind of typically kind of seem to grow, you know, uh, about 50 bucks, you know, or so every year or six months. Uh, so, you know, like I said uh, previously, it is really anybody's guess, you know, it really depends on uh, some economic factors, uh, but, you know, it's easy, I think, you know, for, for at least me to expect, you know, rents to continue to grow a little bit, especially with the mortgage rates going up. Yeah. So give us, you put, you put some statistics out here, kind of tell us, you, you did some research, and again, this, this includes apartments, includes everything, I guess, but right. tell people what you found in terms of rents for for Indiana, central Indiana, um, over the past year or so? Yeah. Well, according to apartments list, uh, you know, the, the rents increased nationally by 12%, uh, in Indiana, they increased by 13%. Uh, so a percentage point higher Indianapolis specifically 14.5%. So two and a half percent above the national average, which was a little bit surprising, you know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, we've, we've obviously netted, you know, population growth here. Um, as a local, you can drive around and and see the construction. You know, uh, not only in, in housing but also commercial enterprises. And so, you know, just just aesthetically, you can tell there's growth. And so uh, that should mean that there's really good demand. You know, mm-hmm. so uh, with demand, you know, you're going to see an increase in prices. Right. Yeah. So I just want to read a couple of headlines. A few. I got just a few headlines. Um, well, let me, let me first, actually, before I do that, I want to talk about, you mentioned 14.5%. That is huge. I, I just want to, I don't, I can't overemphasize that enough. That includes apartments though. Include, I think that's a conglomeration of a lot of different types of, of housing, that number. Right. Um, let me just share quickly what, cause we, every month we fill out a spreadsheet of all the different rent rates throughout central Indiana we compile that into a quarterly statistic and then do a blog on it um, just to give people trends on what's happening. And, you know, it's just been going up and up and up for years. Um, but I, so I want to talk about real quickly, let's look at quarter three of 2021 versus quarter four. I'm sorry, quarter three of 2022. Quarter four is not over yet. Um, and I'll talk about that in a minute, but quarter three of 2021 to quarter three of 2022 from my board, and again, this is mostly single families. Some people list apartments on my board, but most of the stuff that comes through my board are single families. We saw an 8.61% increase in rents from quarter three of 21 to quarter three of 22. Um, that's definitely less than the number you reported, Jake. But again, apartments aren't in there. And I'll also caveat this statistic that most single families that rent in central Indiana do not rent are not listed or rent through the MLS system, right? And a lot of properties are private transactions from Joe landlord to Joe tenant, and they never get put into my board. So we can't report on those because we don't know all that data. Here's the interesting statistic though. If you look at where quarter four rents were in 2021, basically up to um, November of this year. So we don't have the full fourth quarter obviously done yet. We can't report on December's numbers. But if you look at October, November and put that number together, rents are only up 3%. So what does that tell us? I don't know. I want to, I want to see what December finishes at. My guess is that 3% number may go down because December has been really slow. Um, this fourth quarter has been slow and that's not unexpected. We always get seasonality in our market. Um, 
quarters one, two, and three are always crazy busy. Quarter four does always slow. Um, so we'll just have to see how it works out. Um, but let me just read you guys some headlines that I found this morning, just looking at, I think I Googled like rent projections for 2023 or whatever. So let me just read you a few. Um, this is from CNBC on September 28th. Rent prices will keep going up in 2023. Here's what to expect. Okay, so CNBC says print prices are going to continue to go up. Business Insider, October 28th. Rent prices are starting to fall across the U.S. and they're set to drop even more in 2023. So Business Insider thinks that rents are going to go down. And then I found another one from the M Report on October 16th. Rent growth expected to moderate into 2023. So the point is, like Jake mentioned before, it's anybody's guess. Yeah, it is anybody's guess what they're going to do. Um, so <laughs> I guess we'll just have to see how the numbers play out. I can tell you internally, we always look to get rent increases. Um, but at the same time, we do comparative market analysis. We got to go with what the data shows us. So in some cases, I'm going to guess in 2023, we're not going to be able to get the rental increases that we that we are accustomed to getting, like you mentioned, Jake, 50 bucks a year or whatever it is, um, that may not be the case in 2023. So we'll just have to see. Um, anything else on rent rates that you guys want to go over before we move on? Devin, do you have anything to add? Are you, what, what are you, I guess, Devin, what are you, what are you seeing in your, in some of the areas that you're pointing people toward? Are you seeing some differences? I would say yes. Uh, personally, you know, if we're looking at a a property that is currently tenant occupied, it's I would say this isn't based on any hard data, but you know, I would say at least probably ninety five percent of the time, the current tenant that's in there is way below what right. the property could be running for, and you know, that's kind of across the board. It, it, it's situations where you know they might be paying six fifty. And they move out, we do the turnover and we turn around and we can run it out for 950 and, you know, and that's mm. just market rent. Um, so I feel like, and, you know, these aren't necessarily properties where tenants have been in there for 10 years. You know, this, these are situations where, you know, someone moved a tenant in last year and for whatever reason, you know, that's just the, the rate they decided to, to, you know, put them in at. But, but yeah, I think overall, from what I see on my end, uh, dealing with, kind of some tenant occupied properties on the purchase side. Absolutely. I think I've seen kind of rents going up. Right. Okay. Let's transition then into our fourth topic, final topic, and that is the best places to invest in central Indiana. Um, Devin, why don't you start? Tell us, tell us where you're seeing value, where investors you're working with are maybe pointing you toward, or you're pointing them toward. Um, I guess I'll just open the floor up and you tell me where, where you'd invest today. If you, if you wanted to do that. Sure. Well, anyone that works with me uh, is probably sick of, sick of hearing me say it, but Anderson has by far been one of the most successful rental areas that we've come across the last couple of years, even at the height of the market, you know, in 2020, 2021, we were, finding properties that met or exceeded the 1% rule, which was pretty much, it's pretty much impossible anywhere else in central Indiana at this point. Um, great rental demands, you know, purchase price to rent ratios, great, um, you know, days on market as far as getting tenants in is very low. I think the last time I ran some numbers for year to date, it was, I think average days on market was 12 mm. and, you know, which is pretty good. Um, so, so yeah, Anderson's definitely one. If, if you're, you know, as far as multifamily goes, I would say we've had a lot of success in Mapleton Fall Creek. There's a mm -hmm. lot of duplexes and multifamily over there. So if you're more geared towards that, that's a neighborhood that I, we've bought a lot in and, you know, definitely direct people to, um, it's seeing a lot of growth. And again, we picked up a duplex last year and the first tenants were paying, I think we leased it for 13 and we're, it's now on the market for 15. Right. So, you know. Yeah. Maybe it'll fall Creek just so people know that's, that's considered basically midtown. That's, um, you know, like 30th street, um, ish, you know, in that range there. 
Um, and it's one of those areas that is, you know, there's been a creep up from downtown and as far as development and, and refurbishment goes. And there's been a creep down from like broad ripple, we'll say. And this is one of those few areas that's just kind of in that middle that's starting to get really, it's not a secret anymore. There's a lot of people down there doing rehab. I drive through it every day on my way to work and there's just always new roofs going on, uh, windows going in. It's just, there's a lot of activity in Maple, Mapleton Fall Creek. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Anderson's an interesting story, Devin. I think I've told this to a lot of different people. I'll just give a real quick recap. We never were interested in Anderson as a property management company for years. Interestingly enough, we have several employees um, current and previous that worked, that lived in Anderson, but it was never an area that we really wanted to manage in. And I don't remember the tipping point, but a couple, two or three years ago, we decided maybe it was a client of ours who had a bunch of properties in Indianapolis and then bought one in Anderson. was like, okay, we'll, we'll manage it for you. And then we just started buying and buying and buying. I don't know, honestly, that I've ever spent any time in Anderson personally, but I think you and other members of our staff, like Chris Herring mentioned it, you guys kind of live there now. Almost. Yeah. I mean, you're up there multiple times, a, multiple times a week. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And it, and it has, I was really curious when we put our first home on the market for rent, that was in Anderson and it rented so fast, you know? And, and so, yeah, I think you're right. The, it's an intriguing market. I'll say that. And I think we've, we've bought a bunch up there and, we don't have, you know, it's not a large percentage of our portfolio by any means as an Anderson, but um, we're starting to pick up a lot more up there for sure, yeah. particularly from the brokerage side of things. Definitely. And I know a lot of pushback I get is people are worried about appreciation because on paper, mm-hmm. Anderson, it, it isn't a stellar area and it did go through a pretty bad economic decline um, when the GM plant shut down there, I think it was in the seventies or eighties. Um, so, you know, there's definitely that concern. And I know the last couple of years are kind of an outlier, but I know I can say there's been neighborhoods where we bought properties in, in 2020, 2021. And I'm seeing how, you know, very similar houses go up in those neighborhoods now that are 20, $30,000 more. Right. So I think, you know, that, that definitely says something too. I, I think they're, you know, seeing that, that growth as well, maybe not as well as some of the other more established suburbs, but. Right. Well, I mean, it's, you know, obviously it's, a, it's an obvious statement to make, but investors go to value and they're attracted by that. Also homeowners go to value um, because let's face it, you can, you get a lot more bang for your buck in Anderson mm-hmm. um, as a homeowner. Now, you know, you could argue the amenities aren't as great up there and things like that. But at the same time, you know, if you're looking at price per square foot, um, you're going to do a whole lot better in Anderson than you will in Indianapolis. Definitely. So, okay. We well, appreciate that, Devin. Jake, um, you're asked about this every day too. Um, you know, you know, little pockets in our city better than anybody. So kind of give us your thoughts on best places to invest. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it depends on the goals, you know, um, you know, if you're kind of looking more central downtown, um, I'm pretty bullish on the old South side. Uh, you know, there's, there's been a lot going on down there, uh, just South of Lucas oil. Uh, they're building, uh, what we think is a multifamily a complex, not too far from where your wife works. Yep. Um, there's a lot of room down there too, you know, so mm-hmm. it's easy for me to imagine, you know, um, you know, more housing going in down there. Uh, but, uh, Christian park, uh, Garfield park, uh, the areas you mentioned like Midtown, Butler, Tarkenton, all doing really, really good. I've, uh, I remember here in Midtown, uh, even 10 years ago, you know, starting, you know, and it's been a really slow growth, you know, but, but very steady. Uh, but you know, if Indianapolis is, you know, a, a commuter city, you know, so when you're looking at Anderson, you know, you can have people live and work in Anderson, but you could also have, you know, people, you know, living in Anderson and commuting down like they do for, for, uh, for us. Yeah. Uh, but you have similar communities like Shelbyville. Uh, you might keep an eye on that's just southeast of our city. Uh, southwest, you got Canby and Mooresville. Uh, and, you know, there's really growth, you know, in the burbs, you know, just right outside the 465, you know, belt. And, you know, if you're, if you're looking for really consistent zones, you know, with good school districts and low crimes, you're probably targeting more in the burbs uh, than you are downtown. Uh, if you're targeting, you know, higher cash flow, you're probably looking at Anderson or like Devin had mentioned, uh, maybe a small multifamily, like a duplex in Midtown. Uh, those, those are, um, those are pretty popular. It's an older style of housing. 
Uh, but you know, um, we've seen a lot of success in renting those out. And so that's not an unpopular style of housing. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So yeah, I, I kind of like that kind of South and Southeast, uh, portion, uh, near downtown kind of around mm -hmm. Fountain Square, uh, the most. Yeah. Yeah. You know, downtown is interesting. There's just so much going on in terms of construction. Like you mentioned, Jake, with infrastructure, with the interstate system, it's been a it's been, I live near downtown. It's been kind of grueling. The interstate system down there has been difficult. They finally announced, I think in April or that they announced recently that in April, it should be all done, which I'm thrilled about. Um, cause this has been kind of hard to navigate in, inside and outside of downtown right now, because of just so much going on. So, all right, great. Hey, I appreciate you guys, um, your insights into that. So before I let you go, I want just to get to your, just to give people a little more insight into you too. Start with Devin. Devin, your favorite restaurant in Indianapolis. I thought about this for so long because I wanted to have an answer. I have so many, but <laughs> I will settle on Luvino. Luvino? Yes. That's that's like a stop that my wife and I do a couple times a month. Okay. You're talking yeah. about the, on Mass Ave? Yeah, there's one on Mass Ave and one in Fishers. We typically typically go to the one in Fishers, but it, it's not okay. hyper local. But I think they're only in kind of like Indy, Kentucky, Ohio area. Um, okay, but yeah, yeah, we love that spot. You know, it, you can you can get into it. It's it's a uh, really good food. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, we we love Luvino. Your favorite bar, Devin? I would probably have to go with Brick House doing Piano Bar in Broad Ripple. Hmm. If I, I don't go out often, but if I do, that's, that's definitely my favorite. I love, love the sing along, uh, style. So do you sing not well, but <laughs> you, you know, no one can hear me in that capacity. So, right. It's well, but you can shout really loudly. No one can hear you. You can't even hear yourself most of the time, <laughs> but all right. And then finally, if you could live anywhere in Indianapolis and price wasn't a factor, where would you live? It's a toss up, but it, it's kind of a tie between Zionsville or Cicero for me. Really? Yeah. Cicero? Mm -hmm. What attracts you to Cicero? Uh, I just, I think it's just such a cute little town. It has that really just kind of lake town feel. Mm -hmm. And my husband, we want to get a boat someday soon, you know? So that's kind of the main, the main draw for sure. And it, I just kind of like that's a little bit outside has a little bit smaller feel away from the city and, and you have the water right there. So. Right. I'll say this, Devin, as a former boat owner, there's, this is very cliche, but there's the two best days that you own a boat are the day you buy it and the day you sell it. So I mean, we've heard. <laughs> I mean, they can be great. Don't get me wrong. Um, my kids have a ton of memories and, um, you know, as a family, we have a ton of memories of our boat, but, um, and we had a boat that we shared with our family down at Lake Monroe, but, Boy, the number of times that thing, you know, acted up or didn't start or stalled or whatever, um, they can be painful and expensive, you know, Noted. but they can be, they can be a whole lot of fun too. So, all right, Jake, your favorite restaurant in central Indiana. This will come as no surprise to you, uh, but the livery is, is my mm. favorite spot downtown. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in one of my favorite neighborhoods, you know, Lockerbie Square. So uh, yeah, that, that's a that's definitely the spot. You know, I, I really like to go when I'm downtown. Yeah. It's a hard reservation to get, especially yeah. on weekends. It's a really, really popular, but it's so fun. You're right. It has a great atmosphere and good yeah. food. Favorite bar? Dorman street saloon. Dorman street saloon. So I'm guessing yeah, yeah. that's, I can that's, tell you don't know what that is. Yeah. You no, never heard of that. Yeah. No. Uh, it's in cottage home. Uh, it's, it's an old bar. It kind of looks like a dive bar. It's got a lot of history. Uh, it started, I think it was called the mahogany bar in the early 1900s, uh, because that area had a lot of woodworking shops, I think. Mm -hmm. And, uh, cool factoid, apparently John Dillinger, uh, used to, uh, drink there in, uh, I think the thirties, uh, while he was casing, uh, the bank on mass Ave, I think it was called <laughs> state bank which wow. happened to be the biggest, uh, knockover, uh, 25,000. I think he robs, uh, when he robbed it, uh, it was the biggest, uh, bank heist in, I think the nation. Wow. 25 yeah. grand. Yeah. 25 grand. Yeah. I don't know what that, uh, what that uh, computes to nowadays with inflation, right. but, uh, a lot of money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No question. So if you could live anywhere in Indianapolis, 
you may have given it away already, but um, in price more to fact, where would you live, Jake? Well, yeah. So my uh, my politically, so if I if my wife were in the room, I'd say right where I'm at, you know, on the south side on the burbs, you know, with the, with the big yard and and our dogs. Uh, and I, I do like it down here. I, I do like South Side. Really love downtown Franklin. Uh, you know, that's a, that's a city just south and Johnson County, just south of Greenwood. Um, I've kind of split my time bet- between Franklin Township and uh, and Center Grove. But uh, as far as downtown's concerned, oh, man, there's a lot of Fletcher Place, you know, the areas of Fountain Square, uh, Lockerbie Square. I really like Cottage Home, uh, Chatham Arch. I could really be talked into uh, a lot of those. And uh, those neighborhoods are basically adjacent to each other, you know, right. just kind of the central downtown area. Uh, but they're all pretty consistently good now. And, you know, even Holy Cross, you know, that wasn't an, an area that, you know, that was a drive by area when, when I was right. a kid, you know, you, you wouldn't get out of the bus, you know, but, but yeah, yeah, there's, there's really a lot of neighborhoods downtown locally uh, that, that I really like, but uh, yeah, those are a few for sure. I didn't right. peg you as a city boy, Jake. What's that? I didn't peg you as a city boy. <laughs> yeah. I've always wanted to live downtown for at least a year, you know, uh, but um but yeah, yeah, I, I, I guess I'm, I'm kind of split between country and city. Yeah. Cause I, I, I did spend some formative years in uh, Bloomington, you know, and uh, on, on acreage of land. And so I got a little country edge, but yeah, I got a little city edge too. All right. Well, Hey guys, thanks for joining me. I appreciate your thoughts. Um, it's always good to catch up and, and talk real estate with you, with you both. So thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Thanks. My pleasure. We hope everyone picked up some information that'll help them in their real estate investing. We'll be back next month with another podcast. In the meantime, we encourage you to share this podcast with your investing friends, leave us a review, and don't hesitate to reach out to us with any questions until next time. Thank you so much for listening and please stay invested in your investment.